In this lecture, we're going to cover the rest of the pharaohs of the 12th dynasty, including the first confirmed female pharaoh of ancient Egypt. So let's get started. Sinusret II was the next king of the 12th dynasty. During his rule, he initiated many projects in the Fayum area. This is a large oasis, which played an important part during the Middle Kingdom as it was the closest arable land to the city of Memphis. These projects included hunting and fishing in the marshy area and developing an irrigation system which would siphon water out of the oasis's central lake, Lake Morris. He built his pyramid at El Lahoon, which is located between the Fayum Oasis and the Nile. Interestingly, this pyramid was constructed out of mud brick over a stump of yellow limestone. The casing stones were most likely robbed in the 19th dynasty for Ramses the Great. Unlike previous pyramids, Sinusret II dug a trench around his pyramid complex to protect it from flooding. The pyramid was built with a north chapel, but the entrance to the pyramid was not found here, which seemed to confuse archaeologists. Finally, the entry to the pyramid was found underneath the floor of a princess's tomb to the southeast. Another shaft, large enough to move the sarcophagus, was found further south. This was then reworked into a fake burial chamber to deceive thieves. Inside the pyramid, there are multiple chambers with winding passageways. The burial chamber had a vaulted ceiling and a red granite sarcophagus. An alabaster offering table, bone legs of the supposed king, and a gold uraeus were all that was left of the burial. Sinusret III was most likely the son of Sinusret II and his wife, Kenemet Neverhejet I. He is considered one of the most powerful rulers of this dynasty, as his military campaigns gave rise to an era of peace and economic prosperity. He is also known for his unique look in his statuary. He has a few distinctive features which make him extremely recognizable. When he is portrayed older, he is depicted with a very somber expression, with hollow eye sockets, bags under the eyes, and a noticeable grimace. His ears are usually also large and protruding. The rest of his body is quite idealized, regardless of what age he is depicted at, as he is portrayed young and very muscular. During Sinusret III's reign, he was able to clear a canal through the first cataract of the Nile River, expand his kingdom into Nubia, and carried out the earliest known Egyptian military campaign in the Levant. He also erected massive river forts in Nubia and created temples in Abydos and Metamud. He built his pyramid in Dashur, near Seneferu's Red Pyramid. It was also made out of mud bricks with limestone casing stones. The complex had a main pyramid with a northern chapel and an eastern mortuary chapel, all surrounded by an enclosure wall. Outside this wall, there were seven other tombs, most likely in the shape of small pyramids, that belonged to his queens and princesses, which then were surrounded by another enclosure wall. Two pectorals, which is a large necklace that sits on the chest, were found in the tombs of his daughters Sihathor and Mereret. A large temple was also built on the southern side of the pyramid, which was attached to a causeway and an undiscovered valley temple. The entrance of the pyramid was on the western side and led to an antechamber, storeroom, and burial chamber. A granite sarcophagus and a niche for a canopic chest were found, along with pottery and a dagger. There is although some speculation if Senusret III was even buried in this pyramid. He had a mortuary temple and tomb built for him in Abydos, which is where he may have been buried. It is the largest Egyptian tomb by length at 800 feet from the entrance to the inner chamber. It is still being investigated by the University of Pennsylvania as a transition between the large funerary monuments of the Old and Middle Kingdom to the smaller private tombs of the New Kingdom. The next pharaoh was Amenemhat III, who was presumably the son of Senusret III. His reign is often regarded as the Golden Age of the Middle Kingdom. He had at least one military campaign to Nubia, multiple mining expeditions, and a trading expedition to Punt. He also continued his father's work in the Fayum area. He constructed a canal called the Mare Ware, which means Great Canal, but is also now known as Bar Yusuf. Lake Morris, which was connected to the canal, could store 13 billion cubic meters of flood water every year, which would both help regulate the Nile during the flood season and act as a reservoir during the dry season. Amenemhat III is one of the best attested Middle Kingdom kings in terms of statuary. 80 statues and fragments of statues have been attested to him. Like his father's statues, Amenemhat III is depicted showing signs of age, sometimes with furrows marking his face. The kings of this period seem to be moving away from this idealized image of a young king. There is even this amazing image of Amenemhat III as a sphinx, still with a stern face. 
The king built himself two pyramids, the first of which had severe construction problems and was abandoned. This is known as the Black Pyramid at Dashur. It gets its name from its dark, decaying appearance as a rubble mound. This was the first pyramid that was intended to house both the deceased pharaoh and the queens inside of it. Like the other pyramids of this period, it was made with mud brick and clay rather than stone. Its pyramidion has survived, but some of the inscriptions have been scraped off, leading scholars to assume that it was never used. The subterranean structures of this pyramid consist of multiple burial chambers. The king's chamber held a sarcophagus and a canopic jar, but the king was presumably never buried here. The chambers for his queens had been looted, and it is unclear what the other four chambers were used for. The pyramid was most likely abandoned when the upper portions began to sink and crush the underground chambers. There was a valley temple, but in the 13th dynasty it was reused as a granary. His second pyramid is at Hawara, which is located at the entrance of the depression of the Fayum Oasis. Made out of mud brick, this pyramid had a series of security measures to fend off tomb robbers. There was a concealed sliding trap door, which led to an empty passageway and one filled with mud and stone. Because the looters would take time removing the mud and stone, they wouldn't notice that in the roof of the empty passageway, there was a 20-ton trap door that led to another empty passageway and then another trap door. Two packed shafts would then distract the looters again from the actual concealed entrance to the burial chamber. Unfortunately, when Petrie excavated this pyramid, he found that none of the trap doors had even slid into place, which could indicate that there was negligence or someone intentionally left them open. Because most tombs were looted shortly after the burial, this is an unfortunate possibility. There was a huge mortuary temple in front of the pyramid that is believed to have formed the basis of a complex of buildings labeled as a labyrinth by Herodotus, Strabo, and Diodorus Siculus. Herodotus' description of the temple is not entirely consistent with the archaeological evidence, but this may be attributed to the degradation during classical times. According to him, it apparently had 12 covered courts and 3,000 rooms, some underground and some on a second story. The pyramid and mortuary temple are now in ruin, and the entrance to the pyramid has been flooded by a nearby canal. Amenemhat IV may have been the son, grandson, or stepson of Amenemhat III, but he probably ruled as his co-regent from anywhere from one to seven years. He conducted multiple expeditions to mine turquoise in the Sinai and conducted trade with the Levant, especially in Byblos, where an obsidian and gold chest, a jar lid, and a gold plaque all bearing the name of the king, were found. He continued work in the Fayum area, probably completing the Great Canal and building a temple of Renan Utet and Sobek at Medinet Mahdi. Renan Utet is a harvest deity, depicted as a cobra or a woman with a cobra head, and Sobek was a crocodile god. This is possibly the only intact temple still existing from the Middle Kingdom. The tomb of Amenemhat IV has not been identified, but he is most likely associated with the southern Mazkuna pyramid. Mazkuna is south of Dashur, and the southern pyramid is located close to the bent pyramid of Senefru. The pyramid was most likely never completed, which is why there is a lack of inscriptions which would help identify the owner. It was made out of mud bricks, but no casing stones have been found, so it is impossible to determine the inclination or the height of the pyramid. The building shares some structural similarities to the Hawara Pyramid of Amenhemet III, which is why it is most often associated with Amenhemet IV. The entrance has a staircase that leads down to a short passage with a blocking stone. This is followed by another staircase and another blocking stone, which was found in its niche. Finally, there is a U-shaped passageway that leads to the burial chamber. This chamber had a quartzite sarcophagus and some grave goods, including three limestone lamps, an alabaster duck-shaped vessel, and a makeup vessel. The complex was surrounded by a wavy wall, which incorporated a chapel on the east side. This chapel had a large central chamber, a sacrificial room, and two side chambers. Less than 10 years after the death of Amenhemet IV, the 12th dynasty came to an end and was replaced with a much weaker dynasty. This would eventually lead to the end of the Middle Kingdom and the beginning of the Second Intermediate Period. But there was one more ruler of the 12th dynasty that is not very well known, but is very unique. This was Sobek Nefru, who was the first confirmed female pharaoh of ancient Egypt. There were other female rulers who ruled as king or co-regent before her, but there is no definitive proof that they ruled in their own right. She was the daughter of Amenemhat III and possibly the sister of Amenemhat IV. 
She also apparently had an older sister named Neferu Ptah, who was the next heir after Amenemhat IV, but died at a young age. Sebrak Neferu most likely ruled for a very short period and died without an heir. During her reign, she made additions to the funerary complex of her father at Hawara and built structures at Heracleopolis Magna. There are multiple statues that have been attributed to her, though most of them are found headless. Only one image of her face has been found in Gerzer, but it was unfortunately lost at the Berlin Museum during World War II. This piece most likely fit on top of a statue base that was found in Semna. Other statues of her are located at the British Museum and the Louvre. Again, her burial location is not confirmed, but she presumably built the second pyramid at Maskehuna. The superstructure seems to have not been built, but it was probably intended to be larger than the pyramid of Amenemhat IV. The substructure winds around in different passageways, changing direction six times. It consists of several staircase, stone blockings, passages, and then more blockings and more staircases. At the end, there was an antechamber and a burial chamber, which was filled with a sarcophagus vault carved from a single block of quartzite. There was also a large chamber behind the sarcophagus, but its intention is unknown. Unfortunately, it seems that Sobrek Neferu died without an heir, and thus the 12th dynasty ended. Next week, we're going to cover the 13th and 14th dynasties, which were ruled by a long list of kings who only ruled for a short period. This led to the end of the Middle Kingdom, which is where we're going to end our course. Thanks, and stay safe.